Hi, I'm Robert Curtis. I'm the head instructor of the Distance Calculus program. In this video, I'm going to talk about our Business Calculus course. And you're on this page, you're looking around for an online calculus course to take, and you're thinking maybe you should take Business Calculus. Um, let's talk a little bit about the type of students who take Business Calculus uh, versus uh, Calculus 1. So uh, the students who take Calculus 1 are always uh, science majors um, and uh, engineering, mathematics, etc. And this is often called the engineering calculus or what's the more popular term these days is STEM science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So if your degree program requires that you take uh, uh, calculus and that it needs to be in this sequence, then you need to go over to the Calculus 1 page. Um, likewise, if you, after taking Calculus 1, you need to take Calculus 2, then this is the path for you. This is not the path for you. All right. So uh, the first thing you need to do as a prospective student is to figure out which calculus sequence you need to be in. And um, this course is usually described as a single course in differential and integral calculus. That's usually how it's described. It's also called liberal arts calculus. It's also called calculus for non-majors. There's like 20 different names for this course. Um, and it's, uh, it's difficult if you are reading your uh, requirements for whatever you may be using this course for is to figure out which one of these you need to be in. It is an important choice because when you take this sequence here, you do not go any further. It is called a terminal course and that's it. This is your last calculus class in college that you'll be taking. You cannot go take calculus 2 once you take this. Now, many schools, when they say you simply need a single course in uh, calculus, they will accept either course. They will accept either course. If you uh, present them with your Calculus 1 on a transcript, they will say, oh, okay, that's a course. Um, or uh, the, um, they will accept this course. It really depends, and you do need to ask uh, your academic advisor uh, at the school you're either at or planning to go to to make sure uh, of the difference between um, these two courses. Now in practice uh, many of you are planning to go to graduate school, maybe an MBA, maybe a degree in economics, etc. and you've been told uh, before you can start this degree program that you need to have a calculus course uh, on your academic transcripts. Um, likely this is the course that you want to do is the business calculus course. But you should keep in mind also that maybe this time around you're taking an MBA but next time around you're going to go maybe for a master's in economics or maybe even into a PhD program in economics <clears throat> in which case the higher level calculus sequence is going to be for you so you need to do some internal thinking about this um, and try to look into your crystal ball and determine you know am I ever going to need to take the higher calculus courses uh, and the answer you have to answer that question yourself. Many of you will answer and say, no, 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 no. I just have to take this one course and I'm done. Well, this is the course for you and that will work out just fine. Now, 
Once you figure out which course is yours, and I'm going to assume for the moment that you don't need the Calculus 1 class, so I'm going to talk about the Business Calculus class. What do you need in the Business Calculus class um, for a prerequisite? Now, the official prerequisite is Algebra 2 from high school. The a prerequisite over here is pre-calculus with trig, with trigonometry. So that's another way of determining which course sequence you need to be in is you can ask your academic advisor, the calculus course you need me to take, does it require trigonometry as a prerequisite or is it the lighter easier calculus course, the liberal arts calculus class over here, which only has Algebra 2. Um, now, many of you may have been away from algebra for a number of years. We get many students who come back to school after a 10 or 15 or 20 year break or even more, and they say, oh my goodness, I don't remember any of my algebra. That's okay. Don't worry about it, okay? Uh, almost all collegiate students have taken the second year of high school algebra. Maybe it was a few years ago, and maybe it was a few decades ago. It's okay. You'll be fine. So, the business calculus course has three parts to it. It has an algebra, well, it's not really nice to call it a review, but that's what people call these things. It's not a boring review like, oh, let's go over this again. It's actually about 15 assignments to remind you of some algebra that you may have forgotten, maybe teach you some algebra you've never learned before, and also introduce you to the math software that you're going to be using in the course. So it's a nice combination of, you know, getting warmed up and getting going in the course uh, before you start um, the, the, um, the, the actual calculus portion. And then the next portion is on what's called differential calculus. And then the third portion is what's called integral calculus. Now, in some classes that you may take, like in a, uh, in a classroom, there are textbooks. There are, there are hundreds of textbooks for these courses, and they have themes. Uh, some of them uh, uh, have the theme of biology, some have the theme of life sciences, some have the theme of social sciences, some have the theme of all kinds of different things. And there are many that, um, that have the theme of business, all right? In our course, we have a few applications it's not devoid of applications. There's a few, it's, you know, but it is definitely not the center of the course. So it's not a themed course in that sense. Even though we call it business calculus, we call it business calculus because that was the name of the course when we started this 20 years ago at the first university we had distance calculus hosted by, and they called their course business calculus. Actually, they called it calculus for management and social sciences. So we just adopted the term business calculus. But there's not very much business in here. So if you take the course, I don't want you to go into the course and think, oh wow, we're going to do all sorts of business applications. No, we're not going to be doing all sorts of business applications. There are themed books for that. This is not one of them. This is not the course that has a theme like that, all right? Um, why? Because when you put a theme onto a calculus course, it just makes the course longer. And our business calculus class, even though we call it business calculus, it's liberal arts calculus, um, we have students who are coming in from a variety of backgrounds. Some economics, some social science, some going into public health, some going into psychology, and they aren't necessarily interested in a theme. And we only offer the one class, so we can't you know, offer 10 different themes. Uh, maybe someday we will, but for right now, 
It's essentially a themed course, and it's very similar to the Calculus I course, but it's easier. It's lighter. The assignments are not nearly as long. They're not nearly as hard. And, um, but the actual curriculum is actually taken from the Calculus I curriculum, and then it's lightened up. All of the trigonometry is removed, and some of the higher pre-calculus topics that is expected in the STEM course are removed, and so it's just a lighter course. This course over here has about 120 assignments. This course over here has about 70, all total. It's not to say that this is just a totally easy class, no, but it is an easier class. It is expected to be easier, and when you present this course to, um, on your academic transcript, the other universities will know that you took the easier course. That's not bad, it's just that you took the liberal arts version of the course. You didn't take the STEM version of the course. You have to think about which degree program you're actually going to be pursuing. If you're planning to go to MIT and study at the Sloan School, <clears throat> even though you may be doing an MBA at the Sloan School, you're going to be taking this one. <laughs> yep, you're going to be taking this and five more. All right, You will be taking all two years worth of undergraduate calculus as part of the Sloan School preparation because that program is very math intensive. Still an MBA. If you're going to Harvard, which is just down the street, just down the street from here, then you would be taking the business calculus course. It's still an MBA and it's even from Harvard, but their MBA program is just not as mathematically focused like the Sloan School. So this course is just a little bit on the easier side and if you are in a rush, which we get many students who are in a big time rush, um, this is the course to do. And in another video, an introductory video, I talked about how fast you can go through the courses. And you can go much faster through this course than you can from this course over here. Both are an introduction to calculus, but this one is getting you ready for the next courses in the sequence. And this one is just making the, the final movement of your calculus career in college. Um, how do students do in this course who have been away from math for a long time? They do just fine. They may have to add more effort on their part to to you know get moving again. You know, it's kind of like going back to a gym, you know, you're kind of your, your mathematical body's kind of out of shape and you need to kind of work a little bit more. But <clears throat> it's a great course to get going with and get back into shape, so to speak, um, and not necessarily try to, you know, do the, uh, uh, what do they call the, uh, um, the boot camps at, at these uh, health clubs. This is, this is more of the boot camp over here. So if you've been away from mathematics for a while. This is definitely the better course for you to be in. We are ready for you not to remember much. All right, And so the most comments we get from prospective students who call in and ask, they say, well, I, I've been out of math for you know 20 years. I mean, how can I just jump right back into it? Should I take <clears throat> Algebra 2 again? No, you'll be fine. All right, You will definitely be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, now, having said all of these things, also keep in mind, and we have some students who <clears throat> I, I warn them and I, and I you know, tell them all this information, both in this video format and in textual format, that if you enroll in this class, you don't get to jump over into the STEM sequence. All right? And even though I say that all the time, Unfortunately, some students do get into trouble with this. So I'm saying it again. I know I said it already in the video, but I'm saying it again to hopefully 
make the point if in case you are thinking, oh, I'll just take business calculus and then I'll jump over into STEM. We've had some students, unfortunately, take our business calculus course, <clears throat> complete it, get a grade, and then, and then like a year later, find out, oh, I actually changed majors and I'm going to go, I need to go into the, the calculus one, into the STEM calculus now. And then they say, can I just, you know, transfer? No, you can't. You have to do this course again. It's so painful. So in case there's anything like that on your horizon that you may be over here for whatever reason, this is the, this is the course for you. All right? So, uh, and it, there's always a few students every year who get into this trouble and then they find they have to enroll in this class again, they have to pay the tuition again, they have to go through the course again and even though the assignments, they share a lot of assignments, they still, you know, they just have to do it all over again and it's, it's no fun. So, word to the wise, try to pick carefully what you're doing here. All right, so that's the business calculus course. And if you have any other questions, of course, please uh, write in and we'll try to help you as much as possible. And also coordinate with your academic advisors at your home institution to make sure which course they're requiring of your degree program. That's the most important thing is to ask them. And you can send them the information, the syllabi, and the information of, from our pages and ask them to say, which course do you want me to take? Which course do you recommend? Which course do you advise that I take? And that's their job. So they'll be able to tell you. And hopefully we get you in the right course. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.